my bookish besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. It is time once again to do my book of the month predictions, this time for the month of September. <music> So I feel like it's now mandatory for me to open these videos by saying that I cannot believe it's already time for me to do the next round of these predictions because I swear it sneaks up on me every single month. I'll just be going along minding my own business and I'll be like, oh, wait a minute, it's time for me to start researching book of the month predictions. So I never feel truly prepared. And it's even worse on months like these when I don't really feel particularly passionate about any of the potential options because that's kind of how I feel for the month of September. There's not a whole lot that is truly sticking out for me as potential book of the month add-ons or curated selections. There definitely are some repeat authors that are coming out with books in September that have a strong possibility of being featured, but for the most part I'm just kind of like lukewarm on whether or not I think these will be featured. So without further ado, we are going to go ahead and just jump right in, of course, starting with that mystery thriller horror category. And perhaps the strongest contender I have for this category is the new release from Laura Dave called The Night We Lost Him. Laura Dave, of course, is the author of The Last Thing He Told Me, which of course was a Reese's Book Club selection. It was also featured on Book of the Month and now it has an adaptation. So it's an extremely popular novel. I don't think I was as impressed with that novel as a lot of other people seem to be. It was okay. It was definitely an entertaining time and I would be willing to read more from her. I just wasn't necessarily crazy impressed by the last thing he told me. This says Liam No One Noon was many things to many people. To the public he was an exacting self-made hotel magnate fleeing his past. To his three ex-wives he was a loving albeit distant family man who kept his finances flush and his families carefully separated. To Nora he was a father who often loved her from afar. Notably a cliffside cottage perched on the California coast from which he fell to his death. The authorities rule the death accidental, but Nora and her estranged brother Sam have other ideas. As Nora and Sam form an uneasy alliance to unravel the mystery, they start putting together the pieces of their father's past and uncover a family secret that changes everything. With Laura Dave's trademark combination of soulful suspense and evocative family drama, The Night We Lost Him is a riveting page turner with a heartbreaking final twist you'll never see coming. This has a lot of tropes that I like, right? So you definitely have some family drama. You have family secrets. The father dies and then all of these secrets are going to come to life and you have an estranged brother and sister who are going to have to come together to kind of solve all of these mysteries. So in theory, this is a book that should be like right up my alley. I'm just a little bit concerned about Laura Dave's ability to pull it off. But like I said, I am willing to read more from her in the future. And if this is featured on Book of the Month, I will likely snag it. And then the last one that I have for this category is a book called Where They Last Saw Her by Marcy R. Rendon. It says, Quill has lived on the Red Pine Reservation in Minnesota her whole life. She knows what happens to people who look like her. Just a girl when Jimmy Sky jumped off the railway bridge and she ran for help. Quill realized now that she hasn't ever stopped running. As she trains for the Boston Marathon early one morning out in the woods, she hears a scream. When she investigates, she finds the tracks and a lone beaded earring. Things are different now for Quill than when she was a lonely girl. Her friends Punk and Galen are two women who don't know what it means to quit. She has her loving husband Crow and two beautiful children who challenge her to be better every day. So when she realizes another woman has been stolen, she is determined to do something and her first stop is the group of men working the pipeline construction just north of their homes. As Quill closes in on the truth behind the missing women in the woods, someone else disappears. In her quest to find justice for the women of the reservation, she is confronted with the hard truths of their home and the people who purport to serve them. When will she stop losing neighbors, friends, and family? As Quill puts herself, her family, and everything she's built on the line to make a difference, the novel asks searing questions about bystander culture, the reverberations of even one act of crime, and the long-lasting trauma of being invisible. So that absolutely sounds phenomenal, and there are a few things that I really love about this story. First, we have an Indigenous author, and we have Indigenous characters, and this is definitely going to touch upon missing Indigenous women, which is currently still a very, very real problem. I believe that Indigenous women are currently one of the largest population of like missing people in North America. And it sounds like this is definitely going to have something to say about it. And we have a woman who is determined to kind of put this to an end to find the women that have gone missing. So I'm really enjoying the premise of the story overall. I have never read anything from this author, but I absolutely hope to see this on Book of the Month because I would love to give this one a shot. All right, moving on into the romance category. This again is another very light category and I only have two that I think could potentially be featured. The primary contender for me is a book called Primetime Romance by Kate Robb. And I'm featuring this because her former release, This Spells Love, was also featured on Book of the Month, which makes me think that she has a higher likelihood of being featured again. This says, Bryn's happy ending has gone up in flames. She's newly divorced and living with a roommate, Josh, to afford her mortgage. At least she's got Carson's Cove to binge, her beloved 90s teenage soap. All right, Dawson's Creek, anyone? Carson's Cove, Dawson's Creek. All right. So when a birthday cake shows up on her and Josh's doorstep, Bryn makes a wish for her own happily ever after. The next morning,
morning she doesn't wake up in her apartment she's in Carson's Cove and Josh is there too except they're not Bryn and Josh they're the sweetheart and the bad boy will they stick to the script or will real love change the story forever so that definitely has a speculative twist to it which sounds really really interesting I can't even imagine like waking up in my favorite 90s teenage drama that sounds really interesting and really traumatic at the same time because some of the stuff that they went through in those shows unbelievable and can we just talk about the ending to Dawson's Creek for a second I still don't know if I'm okay with it and it's like been 21 years I still don't know how I feel about it you're gonna have to weigh in in the comments below but anyway this sounds really cute fun sweet and like I said there's that speculative element but if you have really enjoyed her in the past this might be one that you want to keep your eye out for on book of the month in September and then this next one is one called Sunshine and Spice by Aurora Pellet it says Naomi Kelly will do anything to make her new brand consulting business a success when she lands a career-saving contract to rebrand the Mukherjee family's failing local bazaar she knows there can be no mistake but as the oops baby of a free-spirited Bengali mother Naomi's lack of connection to her roots represents everything Gia Mukherjee disdains enter Dev Mukherjee Dev knows everything his mother wants including her wish for him to get married like yesterday when Gia hires a matchmaker without you know asking him Dev vows to do whatever it takes to avoid ending up in a cold loveless marriage when a potential match assumes Naomi is his girlfriend the solution to both of their problems becomes clear Naomi will pretend to date Dev in order to sabotage his mother's matchmaking efforts in exchange for lessons in Bengali culture flawless plan right but as Naomi and Dev bond over awful dating at Garba couples cooking classes and tackling the rebrand as a team they start to realize while their relationship may be fake their feelings for each other are starting to become very real as the line between reality and rumor blurs Naomi and Dev must confront what it means to fit the mold and decide how much they're willing to risk for love so I chose this one for book of the month for a couple of reasons first of all this is a debut romance novel it is definitely very very diverse and we're going to have a lot of the similar tropes that book of the month tends to like to feature in their romances including fake dating right so that's going to be a big theme of this story we have two people who are fake dating to overcome cultural issues that they are both experiencing and it just sounds like a cute fun sweet time and definitely right up the alley of something that book of the month would feature or has featured in the past so that's why I do think that it could be a potential strong contender for the romance category for the month of September all right and then moving on into the contemporary slash literary fiction category this is definitely the heaviest category by far starting with a book called once more from the top by Emily Layden it says everyone in America knows Dylan Reed or at least has heard her music since releasing her debut album her senior year of high school Dylan's spent 15 years growing up in the public eye she's not only perfected her skills when it comes to lyrics and melody she's also learned how to craft a public narrative that satisfies her fans her label and the media in the circles of fame and celebrity in which she now travels the careful maintenance of Dylan Reed pop star is often more important than the songs themselves and so lots of people think they understand everything about Dylan Reed but what no one knows is the part of her origin story she has successfully kept hidden her childhood best friend Kelsey vanished the year before Dylan became famous now as Dylan's at the height of her career Kelsey's body is found at the bottom of their hometown lake forcing Dylan to reckon with their shared past her friend's influence on her music and whether there's more to their story than meets the eye immersive page turning and psychologically astute once more from the top is a riveting and keenly observant novel about friendship ambition and the cost of fame so I'm really digging the vibes of this and this is definitely especially with the rock star aspect of this very reminiscent of books that book of the month has featured in the past such as Daisy Jones and the six by Taylor Jenkins Reid or the unraveling of Cassidy Holmes by Alyssa R Sloan and oddly enough her newest release is going to be featured in this video as well so book of the month definitely has a history of featuring these rock star centric type of books and so that's why I do think that this is a strong contender there is also I don't want to say like a mystery aspect to this because I don't know if the disappearance of her friend is going to be top priority in terms of solving what actually happened to her friend but more like our main character reckoning with what actually happened to her friend and realizing the influence that she had on her music and her life and things like that so it definitely sounds like there's going to be those harder hitting aspects to it a lot of self-reflection going on here and you have a main character who has curated her persona to really fit with what the public wants and her label wants and all of that stuff so I think it's also going to be a little bit about her finding identity and maybe being true to herself so I am actually very intrigued by this story and I would certainly be willing to pick it up if book of the month were to feature it and of course I'm going to be featuring the newest release by Sally Rooney here called Intermezzo now Sally Rooney is actually an author that I know absolutely nothing about I have never read anything by her and for some reason her books just do not appeal to me even though she's super popular even though her books seem to be like very character driven and maybe on the harder hitting side I have never been pulled to pick up any of her books and nobody has been able to convince me differently but she is all over the place I hear people talk about her all of the time so I'm kind of like wondering if I'm missing out on the hype let me know what your thoughts are on Sally Rooney down below but of course her newest release is coming out in September and so since she has been featured on book of the month several times in the past I do think that she could be featured again this says aside from the fact that they are brothers Peter and Ivan Kubek seem to have little in common Peter is a Dublin lawyer in his 30s successful competent and apparently unassailable but in the wake of their father's death he's medicating 
beating himself to sleep and struggling to manage his relationships with two very different women. His enduring first love, Sylvia, and Naomi, a college student for whom life is one long joke. Ivan is a 22 year old competitive chess player. He has always seen himself as socially awkward, a loner, the antithesis of his glib elder brother. Now in the early weeks of bereavement, Ivan meets Margaret, an older woman emerging from her own turbulent past and their lives become rapidly and intensely intertwined. For two grieving brothers and the people they love, this is a new interlude, a period of desire, despair, and possibility. A chance to find out how much one life might hold inside without breaking. And again, that seems right at my alley. Very, very character driven. You have complex sibling dynamics and you have grief. I love stories that explore grief, but there's almost literally nothing about this synopsis that is pulling me to it. I still don't want to read this. I don't know what it is, but I know that Sally Rooney is hugely, hugely popular. And I know that a lot of people are really hoping that this book is featured on Book of the Month. And of course, for that reason, and because Book of the Month has featured her several times in the past, I did want to mention her here. Another author that Book of the Month has featured several times in the past and has a new release coming out is Leanne Moriarty and her new book is called Here One Moment. Aside from a delay, there will be no problems. The flight will be smooth. It will land safely. Everyone who gets on the plane will get off, but almost all of them will be forever changed. Because on this ordinary short domestic flight, something extraordinary happens. People learn how and when they are going to die. For some, their death is far in the future, but for six passengers, their predicted deaths are not far away at all. How do they know this? There were ostensibly more interesting people on the flight, but none would become as famous as the death lady. Not a single passenger or crew member will later recall noticing her board the plane. She wasn't exceptionally old or young, rude or polite. She wasn't drunk or nervous or pregnant. Her appearance and demeanor were unremarkable, but what she did on that flight was truly remarkable. A few months later, one passenger dies exactly as she predicted. Then two more passengers die again, as she said they would. Soon, no one is thinking this is simply an entertaining story at a cocktail party. If you were told you only had a certain amount of time left to live, would you do things differently? Would you try to dodge your destiny? Leanne Moriarty's Here One Moment is a brilliantly constructed tale that looks at free will and destiny, grief and love, and the endless struggle to maintain certainty and control in an uncertain world. Moriarty asks profound questions in her newest I Can't Wait to Find Out What Happens novel. So this is definitely giving me The Measure Vibes by Nikki Ehrlich, but yet at the same time, I don't necessarily think it's going to dive as deeply into this concept as The Measure did. So it absolutely seems like it's going to cover those existential questions, right? What would you do if you only had a short period of time to live if you knew exactly when you were going to die? In theory, it really, really intrigues me, but I haven't had the best luck with a lot of Leah Moriarty's books, and I definitely don't like the audiobook narrator that narrates a lot of her stories. So I haven't really bothered picking up her last two releases, which I do believe have been featured on Book of the Month, and is one of the reasons why I wanted to feature her in this video. So I don't think I would pick up this book, but it's certainly an intriguing concept. And if you did enjoy The Measure, this might be one you could like as well. All right, next we have what seems like it's going to be a cute, heartwarming contemporary called The Borrowed Life of Frederick Fife by Anna Johnston. It says Frederick Fife was born with an extra helping of kindness in his heart. If he borrowed your car, he'd return it washed with a full tank of gas. The problem is there's nobody left in Fred's life to borrow from. At 82, he's desperately lonely, broke, and on the brink of homelessness. But Fred's luck changes when, in a bizarre case of mistaken identity, he takes the place of grumpy Bernard Greer at the local nursing home. Now he has warm meals in his belly and a roof over his head as long as his poker face is in better shape than his prostate and that his lookalike never turns up. Denise Sims is stuck breathing the same disappointing air again and again. A middle-aged mom and caregiver at Bernard's facility, her crumbling marriage and daughter's health concerns are suffocating her joy for life. Wounded by her two-faced husband, she vows never to let a man deceive her again. As Fred walks in Bernard's shoes, he leaves a trail of kindness behind, fueling Denise's suspicions about his true identity. When unexpected truths are revealed, Fred and Denise rediscover their sense of purpose and learn how to return a broken life to mint condition. So yeah, that just sounds like it's going to be a cute, heartwarming, sweet time. You have an octogenarian who's lost everybody in his life, and then you have a woman who's kind of been dealt a bad blow, and she's maybe a little bit of a cynic. She doesn't really believe the good in people, it sounds like, and so she's not really believing Frederick's kindness, and it sounds like it's going to get all tangled up together and just ultimately be very, very sweet. So this is a debut novel, and I think it sounds like something that Book of the Month could potentially feature, so of course I wanted to mention it here. And then as I alluded to earlier, Alyssa R. Sloan does have a new release coming out in September. It's called Double Exposure, and because her previous release, The Unraveling of Cassidy Holmes, was previously featured on Book of the Month, of course I'm going to talk about it in this video. This says, Michael Fox and Adrian Hightower were young, beautiful, in love, and famous. The latest model to grace the Valentina Posh runway show and the hottest new superhero actor were Hollywood's breakout couple. They were in every magazine all over the most popular celebrity blogs and on countless E! News stories. They starred in a blockbuster film together, reaping box office gold. Bands were at a fever pitch. No one could get enough of Madrian, the couple that printed money for the studios, for the paparazzi, for themselves. But then their relationship crumbled. Years later, with Adrian topping the Hollywood A-list as a writer and director, dating the country's biggest pop star, and Michael starring in movies for her celebrated producer-director husband, they live totally different lives. But they can never be too far apart. Madrian is still a box office draw, and the studios keep throwing them together. As the two grow more and more entangled again professionally, Michael and Adrian have to reckon with themselves. Are they happy with their current lives or 
have they grown to be better people when with each other. So once again you definitely have that celebrity aspect to this that is really popular in books these days that Book of the Month has featured time and time again. Not really enjoying the synopsis of this one though because it definitely sounds like it's going to be a second chance romance which in theory is fine with me but you already have two people who are currently in relationships with other people and then since they're being thrown together they're probably going to realize that they're unhappy in their current relationships and they want to be with each other and I just really don't like that because the only way that the author has a story in this instance is by breaking up these relationships that might not really have anything wrong with them. That's a little bit icky to me and even though I really don't have a problem with second chance romances I think that they can be done really really well. It really kind of bothers me sometimes when these relationships are broken up on the theory that a relationship that failed in the past is now going to work this time around and I guess it could because you know people grow they change they mature and the things that were problems in the past might not be problems now but I don't know the synopsis of this one is just not working for me. This is not one that I would pick up if it is featured on Book of the Month but because she has been featured before I do think that Book of the Month would consider featuring her again. Another repeat author that Book of the Month has featured and has a new release coming out in September is Rumen Alam with a book simply titled Entitlement. Now I've heard a lot of pretty bad things about Leave the World Behind and so I don't necessarily know if Book of the Month would take another chance with Rumen Alam just because his former book has not really gotten a positive reception but of course because he was previously featured I had to go ahead and mention him in this video. It says Brooke wants. She isn't in need but there are things she wants. A sense of purpose for instance. She wants to make a difference in the world to impress her mother along the way. To spend time with friends and secure her independence. Her job assisting an octogenarian billionaire in his quest to give away a vast fortune could help her achieve many of these goals. It may inspire new desires as proximity to wealth turns out to be nothing less than transformative. Taught unsettling and alive to the seductive distortions of money, entitlement is a riveting tale for our new gilded age. A story that confidently considers questions about need and worth, race and privilege, philanthropy and generosity, passion and obsession. It is a provocative propulsive novel about the American imagination. I'm not really getting very much from that. It sounds very very vague and early reviews are not great. It's sitting at a 3.49 with just 87 ratings so of course that could vastly fluctuate as more and more people read this book but I'm not having high hopes but I did want to go ahead and feature it here. And then the last book that I have for this category is a release that I know a lot of people are highly anticipating and that is the newest release from Matt Haig called The Life Impossible. When retired math teacher Grace Winters is left a rundown house on a Mediterranean island by a long lost friend, curiosity gets the better of her. She arrives in Ibiza with a one-way ticket, no guidebook, and no plan. Among the rugged hills and golden beaches of the island, Grace searches for answers about her friend's life and how it ended. What she uncovers is stranger than she could have dreamed, but to dive into this impossible truth, Grace must first come to terms with her past. Filled with wonder and wild adventures, this is a story of hope and the life-changing power of a new beginning. Matt Haig is a very popular author in the online bookish community. He is another author that I'm not very familiar with, but like I said, I do know a lot of people are really looking forward to this release. He has been featured on Book of the Month in the past, and so I do think we could be seeing him in September. All right, and then moving on into the historical fiction category, another category that is very light with only two selections. The first we have a book called The Shadow Key by Susan Stokes Chapman. Marianeth, 1783. Henry Talbot has been dismissed from his post at a prestigious London hospital. The only job he can find is as a physician in the backwaters of Wales where he can't speak the language. Belief in myth and magic is rife and the villagers treat him with bewildering suspicion. When Henry discovers his predecessor died under mysterious circumstances, he is determined to find answers. Lynette Tresillian, the unconventional mistress of Plas Halaig, lives a lonely life. Her father is long dead, her mother haunted by demons which keep her locked away in her room, and her cousin treats her with cool disdain. She has had no choice but to become fiercely self-reliant. Lynette has always suspected something is not quite right in the village, but it is only through Henry's investigations that the truth about those closest to her will come to light. A truth that will bind hers and Henry's destinies together in ways never thought possible. So that sounds very interesting. This is classified as historical fiction, gothic mystery, and it's also categorized a little bit as fantasy. So it sounds like we might have a little bit of those speculative elements in this one as well. But it certainly sounds very atmospheric, although the synopsis of this is a little bit vague. So take of it what you will, but I did want to go ahead and feature this one here. All right, and the very last one for this category is a book called Songs for the Brokenhearted by Ayelet Sabari. It says, 1950, thousands of Yemeni Jews have immigrated to the newly founded Israel in search of a better life. In an overcrowded immigrant camp, Yakub, a shy young man, happens upon Salda, a beautiful girl singing by the river. In the midst of chaos and uncertainty, they fall in love, but they weren't supposed to. Salda is married and has a child, and a married woman has no place befriending another man. 1995, 30-something Zahara, Salda's daughter, has been living in New York City, a city that feels much less complicated than Israel, where she grew up wishing her skin were lighter, her illiterate mother's Yemeni music quieter, and that the father who always favored her was alive. She hasn't looked back since leaving home, rarely in touch with her mother or sister, and missing out on her nephew Yanni's childhood. But when Lizzie calls to tell her that their mother has died, she gets on a plane to Israel with no return ticket. Soon Zahara finds herself on an unexpected path that leads to shocking truths about her family, including dangers that lurk for impressionable young men and secrets that force her to question everything she thought she knew 
knew about her parents, her heritage, and her own future. So again, we're seeing some similar things in this story that Book of the Month very much likes to feature. Of course, most importantly, it is very diverse. It features Jewish and Israeli culture in here. We're definitely going to have some complicated family dynamics. We have a person who feels kind of disconnected from her heritage and she's going to return to Israel and potentially be reconnected with her family and her people. All of these things definitely scream Book of the Month to me and I would not be surprised at all to see this feature. All right, and then moving on into the final category, which is sci-fi fantasy and magical realism. We of course have the newest release from Chloe Gong called Vilest Things. This is the second book in the Flesh and False Gods series starting with Immortal Longings. So I'm not going to say anything about the book here because I do not want to risk spoilers as this I believe is a direct sequel. But if you enjoyed Immortal Longings, if you got that first book from Book of the Month, I absolutely do believe that Book of the Month would feature this again as they tend to like to continue series. It's not always a guarantee, but since they featured book one, I'm fairly confident that they would feature book two. This next one actually recently came on my radar and it's kind of like a cozy fantasy mystery. It's called The Village Library Demon Hunting Society by C.M. Wagner. It says librarian Sherry Pinkwhistle keeps finding bodies and solving murders, but she's concerned by just how many killers she's had to track down in her quaint village. None of our neighbors seem surprised by the rising body count, but Sherry is becoming convinced that whatever has been causing these deaths is unnatural. But when someone close to Sherry ends up dead and her cat, Lord Thomas Crowell, becomes possessed by what seems to be an ancient demon, Sherry begins to think she's going to need to become an exorcist as well as an amateur sleuth. With the help of her town's new priest and an assortment of friends who dub themselves the Demon Hunting Society, Sherry will have to solve the murder and get rid of a demon. This riotous mix of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and murder she wrote is a lesson for demons and murderers. Okay, so I'm not necessarily sure I understand the comparison to Buffy the Vampire Slayer in here, but this definitely sounds like it's going to be a good time. Like I said, very cozy fantasy mystery s. You have somebody in here who is an amateur sleuth. She keeps solving all of these crimes, very concerned by the body count, and nobody else seems to be. Then her cat is possessed by a demon. Book of the Month has definitely featured books like this in the past, whether it would be like a cozy mystery or a cozy fantasy. They are not shy from featuring these types of stories. So I'm not necessarily 100% like confident that this would be featured, but I wouldn't necessarily be surprised to see it featured either. So I wanted to mention it here because this one seems like a fun time. And then the very final book that I want to talk about in this video is a book called What We Sacrifice for Magic by Andrea Jo DeWord. It's 1968 and the Waltry Ritter family is feared and respected in equal measure. The local farmers seek out their water charms and the teenagers their love spells. The family's charms and spells passed down through generations of witches descending from the Black Forest have long served the small town of Friedrich Minnesota. Eldest daughter Elizabeth has just graduated high school. She is expected to hone her supernatural abilities to take over for her grandmother, the indomitable Madga. She's also expected to marry her high school sweetheart and live the rest of her life in Friedrich. But all she can ask is why her? Why is her path set in stone and what else might be out there for her? She soon discovers that magic isn't the only thing inherited in her family, that magic also comes with a great price and a big family secret. The more she digs, the more questions she has and the less she trusts her grandmother she thought she knew. She must ultimately decide what she's willing to sacrifice for her family, for their secrets and their magic, or risk it all to pave her own way. Navigating the bittersweet tension between self-discovery and living up to familial expectations, what we sacrifice for magic is a touching look at coming into one's own. So again, this is definitely more, I feel like, on the cozy fantasy side. It doesn't sound like it's going to have like hard magic systems or epic high fantasy realms or anything like that. So definitely more on the cozy side. But like I said, this is not something that Book of the Month has shied away from featuring in the past and this could absolutely be featured in the future. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are the books that I think are going to be featured on Book of the Month for the month of September. As always, please comment down below and let me know some of your predictions for Book of the Month, especially books that I left out and books that you think could be stronger contenders than the ones that I talked about here. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some type of magic emoji, maybe like a witch or a wizard or a magic wand or something like that. I definitely feel like there's a lot of magical speculative elements into some of the books that are being featured on Book of the Month. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to see you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms which you can always find linked down below along with any books featured in the video. Until next time y'all, bye!